Are you concerned at all? We, you know, we've talked on this program about the, I think it's $50 trillion that China has just printed. Uh, and 24 of that uh, looks like it went to offshore accounts and uh, was invested in stocks, bonds, et cetera, et cetera, here in the United States and in the West. That re- I mean, that is a staggering amount of, of money that if somebody wants to collapse the market, you know, twenty trillion dollars, fifteen trillion dollars, uh, makes the market move dramatically. Does it not? Yeah, it, it would. You normally wouldn't be concerned because a, a, a major nation would realize that the blowback if you destroyed the global financial system would be so severe. The frightening thing to me is that China has, along with Russia and other nations, created virtually an alternative economic system that doesn't use the Western system at all. So they may not use the SWIFT transaction system. They've created their China payment system. They may not use the International Monetary Fund. They may use the Asia Development Bank. And so normally you'd say, well, no sane nation that's not collapsing would, would um, you know, collapse the world economy because it would just damage them too much. But we're fast approaching the point where they may have an alternative system. If they wanted to pull the plug on the West, they could restart very quickly, and they would be winners from this. And this is something that's actually out in the literature. It's something they've talked about in Unrestricted Warfare, and it's also something that the Russians talked about uh, more than, uh, well, 20 years ago now. Well, they, but they've also taken action steps on those. They're both stockpiling gold. Um, and they uh, both have negotiated with Saudi Arabia to get off of the petrodollar, uh, and so they've they've already taken those steps to to show us <laughs> that they are moving towards getting away from the Western standards. Absolutely correct, hundred percent. Okay, and it never makes me feel good when I talk to you, Kevin. Uh, I mean, I always am glad because I know you know these things, but. I guess there's part of me that's like, I don't, I don't know if I really want to know these things. What should we be looking for, Kevin? Well, one, one of the signs are, would be um, an issue that we're dealing with is the thrift savings plan, where the Chinese are still seeking to access Western capital. And so in the thrift savings plan of the United States, which is all of our pensioners and retirees and veterans and so forth, that's going to be invested in the MSCI International Index, which is heavily weighted to China, much against the patriotic a veteran who doesn't want his money going into Chinese stocks. As long as they continue to access Western capital, uh, they're probably not pulling the plug yet. They're just preparing for it. And, and that, that is a massive push to take billions and billions of dollars from our thrift savings plan and put it into uh, Chinese companies. It will be very painful when they switch over. Um, it will be more painful for us than them if they succeed. Their economy, unfortunate, or fortunately for us, their economy is not uh, the powerhouse juggernaut that it once was. They're struggling. And President Trump, as the first president in my lifetime, actually stood up to the Chinese. So this is a war, and we're finally beginning to recognize it. I've been telling you about this, this thing that has not happened uh, really since 2008, uh, and it's really complex, and you, let me just summarize it this way. The banks have been having extra stress, and at night, uh, they've been going to the Fed to get these gigantic loans to be able to uh, meet all of the regulations. It's very unusual uh, on what is happening. And we're talking about, I think it was as high as 215 Trillion? Billion. Billion. Billion dollars. Um, $215 billion a night for a while, and it's, it's happening again. Nobody knows what, this is, what is causing this, but how concerning is it to you, Kevin? Well, it's very concerning, and it's becoming increasingly so. Initially, they told us it was having to do with tax payments and so forth, very temporary. But it's expanded. It's gone from an average $20 billion to an average $60 billion a night. And then a J.P. Morgan uh, fixed income analyst just wrote that with year end coming up, this is all likely to get much worse in our view before it gets any better. This is a sign of stress on the economic system. Right. So- that- but what is the stress? Is it possible that the stress is the government is spending so much money 
and the, somebody has to buy those bonds, and they're kind of being strong armed, and they don't have the money for the bond. What is what? Well, that'd be a crowding out theory. You know, we are clearly when we're having to um, spend 1.2 trillion dollars beyond what we're taking in, which is a huge percentage. There are all kinds of stresses globally. When you add the trade war, when you add, you know, the the need to keep the stock market high, we have uh, the negative interest rates around the world. All of those things. It is such a big pile of mess. It's hard to understand how people don't see uh, potential tragedy around the corner. And yet we've been drugged into this uh, lull, and, yeah. and the Fed is drugging us even further mm-hmm. uh, with these overnight repo. It, the market's not able to clear itself. I haven't seen the news today on Brexit. I don't even know if the news even matters at this point. But if they do get out, are you worried about that dislocation? Well, everything is a dislocation, but they just keep covering it over. The problem is when the central banks are no longer able to solve the problem, and then they have to be bailed out. Who bails them out? And that's where we're almost to that point. And that's a Jim Rickards uh, argument. Is the, you know, the last tragic happening is when the central banks fail. Well, that's why Norway, I think it was Norway, the central bank said, it's time to get back into gold because there's a reset coming. <laughs> it's like... Um, how come nobody's talking about that? That's a central bank saying something that is very, very different than everybody else. Absolutely. John Malden's been talking about the Great Reset from the 2020s, and that's something that we'll have to face. And that, that is when you have these massive dislocations, when people are paying people to borrow money, that's a signal there's a problem. Yeah. And we have that $17 trillion or something around the world is at negative interest rates.